AB Kempsters, this is Mrs. Vandalai bringing you Blank Wall, Chapter 17. We're going to start off with 17.2 called Spontaneous and Non-Spontaneous Processes. Um, if you notice, we are following this unit right after Chapter 6. So we talked a whole lot about heat and enthalpy in the last chapter. So this is really a continuation of, uh, of that thought there. We're going to be using the enthalpy in this section as well. So Spontaneous. Uh, what does it mean to be spontaneous? Well, there's no outside intervention. So let's talk about the ice cube melting. If I put an ice cube on the counter, what's going to happen to it? It's going to melt. Am I doing anything to it? Not at all. It's just happening, okay? But what if I put an ice cube in the freezer? Does it melt there? Uh, no. So that would be a non-spontaneous process there. And I'm thinking right now it's it's the fall time and the leaves are falling and our yard is a huge mess, okay? So why don't the leaves fall in one big pile to make it a whole lot easier for us to clean it up? Have you ever seen that happen where they all fall and land in the exact same pile? Wouldn't that be nice? Or how about this? What does your room look like right now? Is it messy like most teenagers bedrooms would be or or is it neat well it might be neat because your mom just yelled at you to clean up your room <gasps> that requires work doesn't it doesn't your room get messy spontaneously without anything you know without thinking about it you know you get home you throw your books around you, you put your dirty clothes on the floor i don't know what you do um but that's a pretty spontaneous process isn't it but how does your room get cleaned up? Somebody, hopefully you, has to do work to put it back together again. So that would be a non-spontaneous process, okay? So we're going to be talking about this in this chapter, all right? So let's see what's happening here. The first law, what does it say? Energy can either be created nor destroyed. Uh, when we started chapter six, we talked about the different forms of energy. We talked about kinetic energy. We talked about potential energy. If a ball is rolling down the hill, that's where kinetic energy uh, or potential energy at the top of the hill is being converted to kinetic energy. You're not net gaining energy. You're not losing energy. It's just changing forms. So in that respect, the energy of the universe is constant. So what is a spontaneous process? A uh, process that occurs without outside intervention, it just happens, and it's performance of work by what? Some external force. Performance of what? Work. Four-letter word, work, by some external force. So a spontaneous process may be fast or slow. All right? I'm not asking you how fast you're cleaning up your room. It may take, you know, you all day because you really don't want to do it. I don't know. Um, so maybe be very fast, all right? Like combustion. Combustion is very, very fast. It happens really, really quickly. Uh, diamonds or graphite's really slow. So if you look over here, okay, remember this energy diagram where we start with reactants going to products, okay? Kinetics, which is uh, a chapter we're going to probably do in the uh, beginning of the third quarter, um, deals with how fast that reaction goes, Okay. We don't care about that right now. All we care is about where we start and where we end, okay? The initial and the final. That's, that's it. So we're not talking about how fast it goes, just whether it goes or not. So let's take a look at this, okay? So this is the conversion of graphite, or excuse me, diamond to graphite. So it is spontaneous. It does happen, um, but it's a very, very slow rate in order for that to happen, all right? Let's go ahead and turn the page. So this is called entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. We just saw the first one was that the energy of the universe is constant. So we're going to find out what the second law of thermodynamics is, all right? Well, did you notice that most reactions are exothermic? Is there a reason for that? And the answer is, hmm, yes. Why are endothermic reactions spontaneous at all? It's not very common. Um, so why does ice melt at temperatures above zero degrees? Oh, so does temperature have something to do with it? Yeah. So why does water evaporate at temperatures below 100? It's not boiling, is it? But why does it evaporate? Hmm, good questions. So we learned about something called entropy, which is um, given the, the letter S, okay? And it's a measure of the randomness or disorder or how messy your bedroom is. Okay, so the driving force of a spontaneous process is an increase in the entropy of the universe. All right, what did we say earlier? The first law of thermodynamics says that the energy, the energy 
of the universe is constant. But what does the second law of thermodynamics say? That the driving force of spontaneous process is to increase the entropy of the universe. Increasing the what? Increasing the disorder or the randomness of the universe. That's your second law. That's why some things are spontaneous, whether they're exo or endo. Okay, we want to have an increase in entropy, and we'll see that. Okay, so the positional entropy uh, we're talking about here would be uh, the entropy associated with the states of matter. Okay, so we're talking about solids, liquids, and gases, okay? Or in this case, ice melting, going from a solid to a liquid. So we all know this. We all were actually really good solid molecules. Um, some of you do a great vibrational translation, rotational, um, you know, motion of atoms. Uh, so I'll never forget that. So here is ice, all right, water. It's jingling, perhaps, okay? But what happens when it melts? It's it's out of its its prescribed spot, all right, and now it has a lot of freedom of motion. So you have a very um, specific orientation in the solid. You have a, a very unspecific orientation as a liquid. So what's happened? You go from a very rigid, a very orderly arrangement to a disorderly arrangement. So we say that the entropy is increasing or the delta S is positive. What about salt dissolving? Well, we take that nice solid, see my nice solid right here? And it's a nice orderly crystal. And what happens when it dissolves? You're breaking apart that crystal. No longer is it nice and orderly. It's more random, isn't it? So going from the nice solid to a dissolved state is an increase in entropy. And what about water evaporating? I go from a, a close-knit area. They still have quite a bit of motion, all right? But look what happens here. Whoa, they have so much space between them. Our entropy is decreasing. And if I were to rank these, all right, here we go. Hang on, let me write this down. Well, here it is. I would rank it in this way, that the solid is the least random, the least disorderly, then the liquid, then the aqueous, and then notice I put like four of these, you know, less than signs here, gas. The gas is by far the most disorderly, the most random arrangement you can have, by far. So if you have any kind of a reaction, physical or chemical reaction, where you go from a solid to a liquid or liquid to aqueous or solid to a gas as in like, you know, sublimation or something, then we would say the entropy or the disorder is increasing. Okay, that's an important concept. You might want to write this down. You may want to highlight that. I know some of you use some nice pretty highlighters. Uh, I would uh, highlight that. So let's go on to the next page. So um, this Roman numeral three is more of like the clinical definition of what entropy is. Um, we aren't going to use it all that much. I think what I did in the prior page is going to be much more common. Uh, but this is what the actual definition, this is what, you know, the boring professors wah, 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 would want to talk about with entropy. Entropy is a thermodynamic function describing the number of energy equivalent ways to arrange components to a system to achieve a particular state. Uh, so what will happen? Nature will proceed toward the states that have the highest probabilities of existing. So if I have these four molecules here, what's the probability that they're all going to be on one side of this container? Versus what's the probability of I have three and one uh, and, and you know, one on the other side? Or what's the probability of having two and two? So if you were to look at how many different ways I could have these arrangements, okay? If I have four um, atoms here, okay, I only have one way to arrange four atoms in the one spot. But if I were to identify each one of these atoms as A, B, C, or D, then in the, this state here, I have four ways of this realm. So, you know, atom A is by itself, atom B is by itself, atom C, atom D is by itself. So I have four different arrangements uh, if I have a three and a one. But if I have a two and a two, it'd be like A, B, and then C, D, or A, C, and B, D, things like that. So there's six different ways. If you don't believe me, try it. Um, you know, and this one would be like C, D, and A, B over on the right-hand side. But there's six different ways. So which one has the highest entropy? It is the third arrangement, this one right here. Uh, so it has the highest, let's go back to look at the definition again, all right, has the uh, highest number of energy equivalent ways to arrange the components. So uh, the highest entropy would be Roman numeral three. So one would have the lowest entropy. There's only one way to arrange those four atoms. 
Uh, then two, there's four ways, and then way three has the highest entropy, okay? So let's kind of go down here and see what the second law of thermodynamics. It says that any spontaneous process means it'll go by itself without any outside intervention. There is always, hey, will you emphasize the word always an increase in the entropy of the universe? Does that mean sometimes? No, that means always 100%. So the entropy of the universe is increasing. The universe is going towards more chaos or more randomness or more disorder, okay? So it says the entropy of the universe is increasing. So entropy is a state function. Remember what we said about a state function? It only depends on the beginning and the end. It doesn't make any difference how you get there. So delta S is your final minus your initial. So if your final is more random than your initial, then we say delta S is a positive. Uh, so it says, look at arrangement one and arrangement three. What's the sign of the entropy? It is positive. Why? Because you have more entropy in number three than you do in number one. So a big number minus a little number is a positive number. So then it says energy, or excuse me, entropy, uh, change associated with a change in state is right here. Cell, liquid, aqueous. And, oh, I put only two little uh, less than signs here, but I think you still get the idea. So if the change in state, if you go from uh, an aqueous to a solid, so when you subtract final minus initial, it's going to be a positive entropy. And so we're looking at this diagram here. All right, here's your solid, very orderly, very arranged, to more random, to a lot more random. So this is what's happening to our um, entropy, okay? Let's take a look at the next page. Okay, problem number one. For each of the following pairs, choose a substance with a higher position's entropy per mole at a given temperature. Um, why don't you go ahead and pause this, do A and B, come back. Okay, how'd you do? So, solid to gas. Hopefully this is a no-brainer. Um, I kind of went on and on about this. Here, come here now. Uh, so what is it going to be? It's going to be your, your gas, okay? Much more random, much more, uh, you know, disorderly. What about the same gas at one ATM versus a very, very, very low ATM? So what's the relationship between pressure and <gasps> volume, all right? As you have a low pressure, don't you have a huge volume? That's kind of like what the gas is. The more volume you have, the more different ways those gas molecules can be arranged. So that's going to have your highest entropy as well. So then in problem number two, uh, decide the sign of the entropy change. So if your final has more disorder than your initial, it's a positive. If your final is more orderly than the initial, then it's a negative. So go ahead and pause this and figure out A through G. All right, so how'd you do? I thought I'd bring back this again about solid, liquid, aqueous, and gas. So if you have a solid going to an aqueous, that is a positive entropy, okay? Because you're going from an order to a disorder. You're going to the right, it's a positive change. How about a vapor, a gas, uh, forms crystal? You're going this direction. Ooh, that's a negative entropy. What about gas? Going to a liquid, oh, we're going to the left, aren't we? Oh, that's a negative entropy because this is a smaller uh, uh, disorder than this. So that's a negative number. How about boiling water? What does that mean? You're going from a liquid to a gas, aren't you? That's going this direction. That's a positive entropy. What does it mean to sublime? It means you go from a solid to straight to a gas. Oh, that's a huge jump, isn't it? That's a big entropy change, a big positive value. Now, what about F and G? They're all gases, aren't they? Well, not quite. I see some solids in letter G. Uh, in letter F, it's all gases. So let's go look at this. I have gas and gas and gas. Well, plan A didn't help me out. So what's my plan B? I go from two moles of gas to three moles of gas. So go back, and if you look at that prior page with those pictures of the the, the um the cylinders that had the, the four gas molecules in it. All right, so what's going to be more disorderly? The way I can arrange two things or the way I can arrange three things? And hopefully you got the idea that's the way you arrange three things. So letter F is a positive entropy. Three is more disorderly than two. And what about letter G? I go from a solid to a solid and a gas. So really, I'm still going to the right where I have a positive entropy. Hopefully this makes sense, especially after you already did that Pogel exercise. And so that wasn't too bad, was it? 
I will leave you with this thought. As always, don't wait to be great. Bye-bye.